yet another device to take to bits at the weekend. This is a LED strobe. And this one came from a supplier on eBay called Heronio 2012. Uh, it wasn't very expensive at all, certainly compared to the old Xenon strobes which it's based on. It was £2.10 or $3.19 American dollars. Seems to be a very common thing on, uh, on eBay. So, um, comes with some hardware. It's got threaded inserts. Does it have screws for those? Yes, it does. It's got two little screws for those. Uh, two screws for mounting it in a wall. Do these clip together? Oh, it says close. Oh, it does. It uh, Once this has been screwed on, it lets you just clip it onto the other one. All right, so it's a, a twist sort of lock onto the wall. Oh, that's interesting enough. So let's, uh, let's try it out. That'd be a really good idea, wouldn't it? Let's uh, set this for 12 volts, which is what this is rated at. And we'll just connect it up. Okay, it's quite a orangey colour. That's quite bright, actually. It's got modest, it's not got a super wide viewing angle, but from the front where it's going to be seen, it's uh, it's very visible. Oh, they are very orangey LEDs. Uh, you know, that are actually, it wasn't just the plastic that was colouring it, so to speak. Uh, that's quite uh, neat. Uh, let's turn that off there, because it's a wee bit ferocious. Right, so what have we got here? I can see two transistors um, and two capacitors, which kind of alludes to a flip-flop uh, screwdriver. Might not be a flip-flop, but that's a nice, simple flasher-type circuit. There is a rubber seal round the side here. Um, and this is sealed up with goop at the back. Quite hard goop. So, theoretically, it should be fairly waterproof. So, what's the circuitry like? The positive goes on and comes straight through a polarity diode, protection diode. Quite a lot of resistors in this. Uh, then again, I suppose it's breaking it down into clumps of LEDs. Let's see if we can work out how many LEDs are in each clump. One, two, three LEDs in each clump. Okay. I suppose that allows on 12 volts for the use of uh, different coloured LEDs, like the the blue or the white. Um, what's the big resistor for? Big resistor isn't in circuit. Oh! That might be for, in fact, it's got 24 to 48 volt written on one side of that resistor and 12 volt on the other. So by default, the circuit's 12 volt, but this 220 ohm resistor um, will allow it to be used in higher voltages just by limiting the current to the whole unit. Not super efficient, but ultimately means the same circuit board can be used for a multiple of different voltages. Oh, it's got it marked in the back as well, 48 to 24 volt. Okay. So that means that by tacking the black wire over there, they'd change the voltage rating of it. That's neat enough. I'm guessing it'd probably still work in 12 volts. Uh, in fact, let's try that out. But at a dimmer intensity, so let's turn the power supply back on again. Hook that to the positive. In fact, I'll just hook that straight onto the diode. And hook that onto there. Yeah, it slows it down, makes it dimmer. Okay, but it does still work. That's interesting to know, just for novelty. Right, I'm going to uh, reverse engineer this completely now then, because it's quite a neat little unit, and uh, I'll be back in a moment. So I did my usual. I took a photo of the back and flipped it and uh, just processed it a wee bit so I could just doodle bits on, and it is an absolutely... Oop, he said smacking shove. It is an absolutely standard flip-flop circuit. 
The only difference is a standard flip-flop circuit, which would normally have balanced component values and an equal mark space ratio, is that uh, it's designed so that it's got a um, lower value resistor here to mean that the when the LEDs are on, they're just on briefly, and then a longer off delay set by these two resistors. The LEDs are in five circuits of three, with one resistor, a 33 ohm resistor per circuit, uh, and then the, the LED is going to basically just jump you onto one of the uh, channels in the flip-flop so that they flash when that transistor turns on. I could try explaining how a flip-flop works, but it always ends up confusing. But uh, I'll give it a rough go. When you initially turn it on, uh, there's a sort of, like, component values are never 100% match, so one of these transistors will turn on. And when it does, it kind of, effectively, it clamps the other transistor. Uh, via the capacitor, and then that capacitor then has to charge up via its matching resistor to actually, um, in the case if this one was on, so the LEDs are lit, this uh, capacitor would be charged uh, charged up by this resistor until it reached the forward voltage of this transistor, and then when that turned on, it would suddenly clamp the, the, the other transistor, turning it off, and then it would charge uh, via the longer value resistor uh, that uh, capacitor then would charge via that higher value resistor to give the longer time that before this one turned on again. So that's how they do the mark space ratio. Very simple. Very, very simple indeed. That's quite good. It's a very serviceable unit. So I'm guessing that, you know, the, the one circuit board does all. It gives you that choice of the voltages, 12, 24 or 48. I, I wonder if they use a different resistor for the 48 volt. Probably do. Uh, and then, of course, they can use white LEDs, blue LEDs, or whatever, um, just because they've got that multiple of three, which, uh, in the case of these ones, will probably add up to six volts, with the rest dropped across the resistor. But in the case of the blues and greens and whites, would add up to about nine volts, with the rest dropped across the resistor. So a very neat circuit. It's all right, actually. I wasn't expecting to be a flip-flop thing. I thought it was going to be a blob, you know, just one of the generic sort of, like, chip-on-board blobs. But having said that, these are just standard components and it's a standard circuit so that makes sense that they've done that so yeah that, that's actually quite neat yeah it's pretty good